Hello my friends! Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another reading vlog. I'm so excited about this video because I am participating in the 24 hour let's get graphic graphic novel comic manga readathon! <laughs> <laughs> Remember when I said like two months ago that I wouldn't participate in readathons this year? <laughs> Okay, but also remember when I said people are allowed to change their mind? <laughs> We're embracing that. <laughs> I really love a good 24 hour readathon. There's just something about knowing that you're going to spend a day, 24 hours, maybe a night, just reading like as much as you can. And this readathon in particular is very sort of like low key because it's graphic novels, it's manga, it's comics. Those are pretty easily digestible books to read and books that I love. There was no question in my mind I had to participate. This readathon is being hosted by Gwen, Keisha, and Elizabeth. I will link them all below. All really wonderful booktube creators, bookstagram creators. I really, really love all of them. So there are three prompts to follow for the readathon. One of them is to read a book in a color scheme that you really like, to read a book with an animal in the cover, title, story, etc. And another one is to read a book that has a one word title. Now, I have books that cover all of those prompts. You know I'm like a prompt lover. For a one word title, I'm going to read Feelings by Manjeet Thap. For my favorite color palette, I'm going to read The Sprite and The Gardener. This is by Re Arbogero and Joe Witt. I'm also buddy reading this with my friend Summer, which I'm so excited to do. And then for a book with an animal on the cover, I'm going to read Sea Siren, which looks so, so, so cute. Look at this cat. I cannot. This is by Amy Chu and Janet K. Lee. Now, I don't know what's wrong with me, but three books in 24 hours, it just seemed like almost too easy. <laughs> so I decided, why don't I pick up a few more, right? Like just a couple more. So I got all of these as well. <laughs> What is wrong with me? Oh my gosh. I mean, I'm sure the title of the video already gave it away, but I thought, hmm, why don't I just try to read 24 books in 24 hours? <laughs> why don't I try to go for the most clickbaity title I can think of? <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do over the next 24 hours. It is currently 1221 and I have plans tomorrow, actually at 12 and I have to leave at 11. So I'm already behind schedule. I want it to start at 10 a.m. I have work today as I usually do on Fridays and I'm gonna have to squeeze in reading when I can on breaks, on my lunch, etc. But other than that, I have no plans tonight, this evening. I'm not doing anything at 3 a.m. <laughs> other than trying to read 24 books in 24 hours. Now before I get to the books, what I think the game plan is going to be is that I'm going to read about five of these and then check in and do a review of the books that I read because I don't want to like stop every single time I read a book to talk about it. It's going to take a lot of time. It's probably just not going to be efficient. And then what I also want to do is make sure that I am keeping like a running list of these books, how they're categorized, kind of like a tier ranking, if you will, of all 24 books. So a lot of these are middle grade books, which you find a lot of more graphic novels in middle grade. So that makes sense. But I'm really, really excited to read all of these. One reason I'm so thankful for this readathon is because it got me into the library, finally. And I brought home 13 books from the library. And then I also bought a handful of books as well. So on top of the three books I've already talked about, the additional books that I have are Frizzy by Clarabelle A. Ortega, Crumbs by Dani Sterling, Be Prepared by Vera Brosgol, Garlic and the Vampire by Brie Paulson, The OK Witch by Emma Steinkellner, The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Ostertag, Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, Amelia's Notebook, and Amelia's Are We There Yet Longest Ever Car Trip by Marissa Moss, Lore Olympus Volume 3, Witches of Brooklyn S'more Magic by Sophie Escabas, The Runaway Princess by by Joanne Trianowski, Graveyard Shakes by Laura Terry, Sunny Rolls the Dice by Jennifer L. Holm and Matthew Holm, Apple Crush by Lucy Kinsley, When Stars Are Scattered by Victoria Jameson and Omar Mohammed, Old Things by Ziggy Haynor and Benjamin Phillips, Alcat 
Toe and the Turnip Child by Isaac Lenkowitz, The Complete Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll, Arthur and the Golden Rope by Joe Todd Stranton, and The Only Child by Guo Jing. So lots of books. I've already said this a million times, but I'm so excited to get into them. And we will see if I can actually read all 24 in 24 hours. For now, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take a break for lunch, probably jump into one or two of these books and I'll check in in a little bit. Here's the real current situation. I just got done with work. It's like 4 p.m. I've been able to read one book and I knew I, I'm not gonna check in after every book, but I just had to check in because I'm laying on my couch and I'm so tired. All I wanna do is go to bed. And I have read one book out of the 24 books. Like y'all, this is how I'm going to complete 24 books is by wanting to fall asleep on my couch right now. I will say I did stay up too late last night. It took me so much longer than it should have to create my thumbnail for the video I posted today. Like, I'm not kidding you. It took me like two hours and I don't even like the one I ended up with. Okay. Anyways, it's around four o'clock. Got done with work. I've read a book. I'll talk about it later. I'm gonna try and read another one and to not fall asleep. But if I do, I'm just gonna take like a little snooze. Just a little snooze. Maybe I'll recharge a little bit. Andrew and I have been craving the crumble cookie selection all week. So I just ordered some. He should be home soon. And hopefully the next time I check in, I'll have more books read, hopefully. Georgie, are you so handsome? In your pink tail? I think crumble is here. I had to change shirts for a photo. So just so you know, in case you were keeping tabs. Got him. Andrew isn't home yet, but I definitely want to check these babies out. Let's see. Oh, dang, these look good. Hello, I can't tell if I want this light on or not. Let's see, might be too bright. Oh, <laughs> hello? It's a little much. We're gonna be cozy and say no. And we'll just let the lighting adjust to this. This is much more of a vibe. Okay, so I love how I said I would only check in after like reading five books. I've read two so far. It's almost seven o'clock. <laughs> I'm really, really behind. I'm starting to get actually a little bit nervous that I'm not gonna complete this. But I picked up three more and we'll be reading these. They are about to start doing some live like reading sprints on YouTube. So I'm excited to hop on there, see what everyone's reading and just, just get some good reading in. I've got like a candle going over here. I got my lights on. It's just gonna be a whole mood. That's the only update I have so far. I have read two books so far. <laughs> I picked up three more and I will chat about all five of them once I've completed the next three. Mm -hmm. Then I've already Not read. Not the hidden gems, yeah. Hi. Right, yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, I got that one. I've read Frizzy so far and loved it. I love that cover. It's 11 11. They did reading sprints for so much longer than I was thinking they would, which was awesome. It was a good thing. I ended up staying for the whole of the live show. It started at seven my time. So yeah, four hours. I have finished eight books so far. I'm still very behind schedule and I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. So I'm gonna kind of run through the ones that I have finished somewhat fast because at the end of this video, I'm gonna still do a tier ranking all of the books that I did end up reading. Hopefully all 24, I really wanna get through all of them. I'll quickly go through the ones that I liked the least to the ones that I liked the best. Sunny Rolls the Dice is a very typical coming of age middle grade book. Specifically, we're following a middle schooler who is interested in playing D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons, but her friends are kind of growing out of that and she's struggling with feeling like, should she keep playing or should she not? I thought this one was cute. It was fast paced. It was really easy to get through, but it just felt a little disjointed at times. It's a very typical like story, like middle school kid trying to figure out what they like 
like who they are. Great message at the end of the story, but overall it was just kind of like a very mid run of the mill coming of age story. Graveyard Shakes was a little bit more interesting. It's another kind of coming of age, being true to yourself type of story, which you find a lot in middle grade graphic novels, especially. This one actually was a little bit darker than I was expecting. I almost wouldn't feel comfortable reading this with a younger child, but I also feel like it's a little bit too young for older children. So I kind of feel like the demographic is a little bit lost in this book. This follows the story of two sisters, one who is like a little bit more put together and she wants to fit in and all this stuff. And then a younger sister who is disheveled, kind of rowdy, does whatever she wants, doesn't care what people think. And she sort of gets like kidnapped at some point. There's a little boy ghost that like helps them. And there's a really sweet message at the end, of course. But I also, like I said, I feel like the demographic was a little bit confusing. It was an interesting story, but it just isn't going to be memorable for me at the end of the day. This has been my least favorite book, <laughs> and this is El Cato and the Turnip Child. I really wanted to like this. I think it looks really fun. I think the theme is like cute, it's witchy, it's creative, it's original, but the storytelling for me was just not good. Like the writing itself, it was not my cup of tea. I couldn't wait for it to be over, to be honest, which feels really harsh to say about a graphic novel, but I just didn't like this one. The next two books I thought were really cute really fine. They weren't like my favorite favorite so far, but they were good. So the first one is The Okay Witch. It follows the story of a young girl who discovers that she's a witch and her mother was a witch who ran away in the 1600s. So she's much older and it sort of captures a lot of like history of witches in this small town, a lot of like generational secrets. It was just okay for me. The Okay Witch was an okay book. <laughs> and then this one is called Apple Crush and this was super cute. I mean, this is again, just another coming of age story. Particularly we're following our main character who her parents recently got divorced and she's kind of going through being involved with now, you know, a blended family. She's also kind of feeling a lot of pressure around her to like be more about romantic things than she is. Like there's a lot of pressure from her family like, oh, is that your boyfriend? And like, it's just, you know, a boy that's a friend and stuff like that, which is definitely something that kids, you know, struggle with as they grow up. So I thought it was really cute. I think this is a really, really fun one for fall time, Halloween time. It's super, super cute. Okay. And the next three that I read that I have loved, loved, I was pleasantly surprised because honestly, I read most of those before these ones and I was like, oh my gosh, did I just pick a bunch of duds? <laughs> but I'm so happy to report that I actually have three books that I gave five stars to. The first one that I read was The Runaway Princess, which is so shocking to me. I was not anticipating loving this as much as I have. The art style is so fun. I felt like this story was so original and creative and just to me, this is like childhood Zoe. Like I loved the whimsy in this book. It was perfection. If you're a fan of like adventure time, <laughs> where things are just like so weird, but so much fun. This is what that book gave me. We follow the story of this little princess who finds herself running away. Particularly, it's broken up into three different stories. And the other unique thing about this book is that there are times where the fourth wall will kind of break and the narrator or the princess will talk to you as the reader and say, hey reader, I need you to close this book and shake it up and then flip to the next page. And then like the next page will show that like, the forest is all broken down because you shook up the book. So it's like also interactive, which is so fun. I think this would be a really, really fun one to read with maybe like six to 10 year olds. Like I just think it was a great one. And the next book that I read, I also loved so much for very different reasons, but this one is called Old Things by Ziggy Hanor. And oh my word, it so good. I'm just gonna read the quick back of the book because it just encapsulates perfectly what the book is about. It says Benji and his grandma, Bubby Rosa, are gathering the ingredients for a Friday night dinner. As they wander the streets of Brooklyn and Manhattan, Bubby struggles to reconcile the world of her memories with the new realities that surround her. A powerful and affecting story of Jewish identity and generational divides, of tolerance and acceptance, and a restless city and its inhabitants. It was so, so good. There was this one page Page that really surprised me and also uh, made me teary. Th this whole book I was tearing up. This grandmother, she's very cranky. Like, 
<laughs> she's angry at everything and everyone and you get it like I feel sympathy and empathy for her in this book and at one point she meets a man on the street who has a bunch of tattoos and she kind of gives him a hard time like oh you've got all your tattoos like you think you know what life is about like that's how she kind of is and then the next page has this picture of a bunch of hands with tattoos um, from the Holocaust and it just says tattoos. I know people with tattoos and it was like so powerful. I just loved this book. Loved it. Really, really poignant, really beautiful. The artwork was great. Loved it. And then the next one that I absolutely loved, I'm so excited that I loved it because I really wanted to love it and I do, and I love when that happens, was Frizzy by Clarabelle A. Ortega. Oh my word, I cried. I don't know if you can tell, but I have a lot of pages that I have like dog-eared because there were so many powerful and impactful moments in this graphic novel. Like I was so impressed with how some really tough like conversations were delivered. This is the story of a girl who has textured very curly hair and her mother and her family and of course people at school are all about kind of bullying her and making her feel bad like she has bad hair and therefore she is not like worthy of respect and worthy of good things and there's this tie between her hair and her self-worth and acceptance and it's a really powerful story. I was not expecting the mom in the book to be so much like that. But then comes in this aunt figure who's able to shed light into why her mother is that way and talk about generational trauma. And I'm just, like I said, so, so impressed with the conversations that happened in this book. I loved it so so much. I learned things. I, I could spend like 15 more minutes, I feel like, just talking about parts of this book that I really, really loved, but I just really recommend picking this one up. It was so good. Okay, so it is 11.25 now. I need to kick it into gear. I have so many books to get through. I'm starting to feel nervous, but I'm gonna do my best. The next book that I'm picking up, I'm really, really excited about. It's probably other than Laura Olympus, like the one I'm the most excited to read, and that is The Sprite and the Gardener. It's beautiful so excited. My friend Summer and I are buddy reading this right now so she's reading it currently and then she's gonna like Marco Polo me and tell me her thoughts and then I'm gonna read it and do the same thing. But yeah I really hope I love this one. So that is my check-in for now. I'm gonna get through a handful more books. Check in with y'all soon. Wish me luck. Hello it's Saturday. <laughs> So clearly last night did not go to plan. I got to about almost one o'clock. I read three more books total and I got my period and I started to feel really tired, really crabby, really in a lot of pain. And I had a moment where I was like, why am I putting myself through this? So I went to bed. I chose some self-care over pushing through and I don't regret it. Now, am I struggling with feelings of a little bit of embarrassment and some like shame and wanting to tell myself that I failed because I had this great idea for this challenge and it was gonna be an awesome video and it was gonna just be so great like yeah I do feel that way and maybe some of you are watching this and going Zoe it's not that deep like who cares? You didn't read the books. You didn't stay up late. Like you went to bed. Like it's not a big deal. But I'm actually kind of taking this as a really big win for me. For somebody who was on YouTube for a long time and in the past I would have chosen push through, make yourself miserable, do the thing that's painful and awful <laughs> because you need to do the video. Like the video is the priority. And last night I didn't do that. And it wasn't a hard decision. It was you're not feeling good. This isn't fun. And even though you wanted to do a challenge with the best of intentions, it didn't go the way that you planned. And like, could I have easily like put on the same outfit, waited until tonight and basically pretended that it was super late and I did the challenge? Like, yeah, sure. But for what? Like, that's not being authentic to myself. I don't know. I've just been thinking a lot about it this morning and I was like, oh. I even thought about scrapping the video because I didn't do the challenge. I didn't succeed in what I wanted to do. But instead, I'm choosing to just be honest because, like, <laughs> what is it worth <laughs> doing, like, crazy reading challenges and making yourself miserable for what? 
And when I came back on YouTube, I said I wasn't going to do that. It wasn't going to be full of pressure. And I've been constantly throughout making videos again, checking in with myself. Am I having fun? If the answer is a resounding no, then I'm not doing it. That's not what this is anymore. So for those of you that feel tricked or duped into watching this thinking that I stayed up until 3 a.m. to read all the books, I am sorry. I didn't get to do that, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> because I needed to choose myself in that moment and that's what I did. For the logistics of what's next, I still have a whole handful of books to read over here and I want to read them. So that is the plan. I am going to be doing that. The thing is too is when I was reflecting on how badly I set myself up for success <laughs> with this, I have plans today. I have to leave in about 15 minutes to go. I'm spending time with my siblings today actually which is going to be really fun. I in my mind was like okay Zoe you're going to start at 10 a.m on Friday and you're just gonna take a lot of breaks like during work like it's fine like you still have to work but Fridays are usually chill it'll be fine you'll get so much reading done during the workday I didn't start reading until 4 p.m. so I was already at a major disadvantage there's no way I was going to physically even stay up past 4 a.m. so I really only gave myself 12 hours <laughs> out of the 24 to read these books like how was that fair or possible to myself I don't even know <laughs> and then last night I was thinking too like when I was reviewing the books I was just speeding through them because I was like I need to keep reading oh my gosh and I don't like that I'm not about that we are about self-care and authenticity on this channel so that's what we're gonna move forward with. Okay, so like I said, I have to leave soon. I'm actually hanging out with my brothers and sister today. We intentionally this year decided that we wanted to kind of like hang out with one another at some point without like children or spouses. I honestly think the last time I hung out with just my siblings, maybe in high school. I'm not even kidding. So kind of a monumental day. I'm excited to hang out with them and just spend intentional time with them. I'm not gonna be vlogging or anything like that. But when I come home, I'm gonna hop right back into reading. We are gonna get started. We are gonna keep reading these books because I am sincerely excited to keep reading them. That is the game plan. Thank you so much for sticking around. If you're still watching, if you're still here with me, this is still gonna be a great vlog and I'm still really stoked about it. All right, well with that, I will check soon. Hello, I am back. I'm not wearing my watch. I think it's around five o'clock the last time I checked. I've been home for a couple of hours and honestly as soon as I got back home I just started reading again. <laughs> so I have completed about six more books. I'm gonna quickly talk about them and then get back to reading. So the first one that I wanted to talk about was where I left off last night and that was The Sprite and the Gardener. Oh my word, so beautiful. 10 out of 10 for the art. Honestly, wish that I had like a print of it that I could hang in my house. Just gorgeous. The color palette and like the pastel, like muted colors, stunning. It's a very simple story about a little sprite and a gardener, obviously. <laughs> and the sprite meets this gardener and basically helps her garden. And it's a very sweet story. I mean, there's a little bit more to it than that, but it's just so precious. It's so cute. I loved all of the little sprites. It's like her plus a couple of her friends. There was even one sprite that was like plus size, which I just loved seeing. I thought this was so precious and so cute. It's a five out of five for me. I loved it. The next book I read after The Sprite and the Gardener was Garlic and the Vampire. This one was so cute. I loved how in the foreword it says for all the anxious bulbs. <laughs> as soon as I read that I was like oh this is gonna be a book for me. This follows the story of our little friend Garlic and she goes to basically face her fears and go check on the new neighbor in town who is a vampire and she's really scared but she goes and does it. It's a, just a very simple story about that. It's adorable. I loved, loved, loved the artwork. I know that there's another one out called Garlic and the Witch and I really want to read that one too. I thought this was so cute. This one was a four out of five for me. The next book that I read was Be Prepared and this is the story about a young girl who goes to a camp. She is Russian so that she goes to a Russian summer camp specifically and it was very funny it was very quirky I will say though I didn't like this one I thought I would like it so much more than I did but I wasn't a big fan of the art style I actually was surprised that it was 
just this like kind of muted green the whole time. I thought that looking at the cover it was going to be like a fully colored graphic novel but it's honestly just these kind of like black brown green tones. Not my favorite personally but the story was cute. It was funny. I definitely could relate to her. She felt very left out. It was hard for her to make friends. She felt kind of different and weird. But try as she might she just could not fit in. So it was a cute story. It just it felt a little long-winded to me. I will say like I feel weird saying that I didn't love this because this is the author's like actual experience like this is a story about her going to the summer camp so while it wasn't for me I would still definitely recommend it I think this is a great graphic novel and it was fun it just wasn't my cup of tea so this is a two out of five stars for me the next books that I read were the Amelia's notebook books these were a walk down memory lane for me oh my goodness especially this first one amelia's notebook i owned this book as a kid and i just remember loving it and it so inspired me to also have my own notebook and journal and i remember like in her notebook she like will tape things into her notebook to remember them and I remember that concept just being like oh my gosh that's crazy I want to do that and so I would try and tape things to my notebooks and it would never work out well but I love the creativity behind these books I will say Amelia is kind of a jerk <laughs> I definitely didn't pick up on that as a kid, but she's not very nice. And the first one we're following the fact that she moves to a new town, new school, has to make new friends. This is a very kind of like relatable and, you know, easy, sweet story, but it's fun to read. It's, it's just, that's the best way I can describe it. I will say the second one is about her and her mother and her sister and they go on this road trip. They see like the Grand Canyon, they're out west and she is documenting those things. But throughout both of these books, but in the second one specifically, she is so just like nasty and mean when she's talking about her older sister. And I get like sibling relationships are not the easiest growing up and you could feel a lot of type of ways about your siblings. But she was just relentlessly mean and I thought maybe in the second one there would be some kind of like resolution or like, oh, you know, we apologized and made up. But there was nothing like that. I was trying to think when I was reading the first one, I was like, oh, maybe these would be fun books for my niece to read. She's seven years old, like she might get into these. And as I kept reading, I was like, this girl is so mean. I wouldn't want my seven-year-old niece to even read these books because she's just coming across kind of harsh. So that's definitely something that surprised me because I didn't remember her being that way as a kid but these are fun they're interactive they're much more on like the kid-ish side of things if I had to give a rating I don't know these are pretty low for me I'm surprised but they're pretty low for me I would almost give like a one star oh that's harsh <laughs> And then the last book that I just finished was Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. Wow, this was a very heavy book. This I know came out as like a regular kind of novel first and then they made it into a graphic novel. This is a story about a young man whose brother was shot and killed. He goes to get revenge on who he believes killed his brother. He walks into an elevator and over the course of the next 60 seconds, so one minute, several people who have been murdered in his life come into the elevator and they have these conversations with him. It's a story in verse. It's just told really, really well. I loved, loved the way it was written. I loved the idea of the timing of the elevator ride just being 60 seconds but over the 60 seconds at each floor these people are coming in and they're challenging him on his decision to go and take out his brother's murderer who he thinks killed his brother. I liked the ending personally. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything so I won't but I loved this. I thought that the art was really impactful, really well done, the story's really well done. I really, really enjoyed this one. It was a four out of five stars for me. All right, so that was six more books down. A few more to go. I'm gonna keep reading and I'll check in later. So I have read six more books. Yay! The first one that I picked up was one that I was really anticipating. I loved, loved the art style. That was Feelings. I will say it wasn't my favorite favorite. I thought maybe it was going to resonate with me more than it actually did, but I'm glad that I own this book. It's really, really beautiful. And it's kind of like this visual journey through emotions, 
over the course of a year. It's a very relatable book. It made me feel seen. I think if I had to give it a rating, it would maybe be like a four star for me. I definitely thought that it was gonna like make me cry. <laughs> And it didn't, and that's okay. I just didn't get a lot of feelings from feelings. <laughs> the next one that I read was Arthur and the Golden Rope. This is Brownstone's mythical collection. And this was about a little boy who is really brave and he basically goes to find the elements to create this golden rope to defeat this like wild wolf beast thing that nobody else can. I thought this was fun. It definitely didn't capture my attention as much as I thought it would. It sounds like this book is one in a collection of books that goes through kind of like mythology in a children's tale kind of way. I did think the art was really cute and I thought the story was easy to understand. It's much more of like a children's book I would say. I liked it but it just wasn't my favorite. I definitely didn't need to read this one. I think if I had to give it a rating this is probably lower on the list for me like a one or two star. The next book that I ended up finishing was Crumbs. This is by Danny Sterling and I'm a little torn on how I feel about this one. It follows the story of Ray and Lori who meet via a bakery which is super cute and in the bakery there are like baked goods that hold spells. So like one of the baked goods is called romance and it kind of evokes like romantic feelings when you eat it. It's such a cute concept. <laughs> and Ray meets Lori in the bakery. They kind of kindle a friendship, but then of course a little bit more. It's overarchingly so the story of sort of like falling in love while also in the time of your life maybe when you're more of a young adult you're pursuing like your careers and your dreams and so you don't know if you're able to do both and so ultimately having to make that choice. I think this story really grew on me. I did really really love the art style of this one but it definitely took me a good like three-fourths of the way to start feeling anything for the characters. <laughs> As I was reading it I was like man I'm gonna have to talk about how I didn't feel anything for anyone in this book but I finally started to kind of go oh that was cute and oh I like them so there was more depth to it. It just took a long time to get there. I do feel like the end was worth it and I'm glad that I read this one. I liked it a lot. I would say overall this one was probably, it was probably like a three and a half, four star read for me. I'll probably end up changing my mind at some point too, but <laughs> I did really like it overall. Okay, so the next one I picked up, <laughs> I didn't realize until I started reading it that it's actually like the third book in a series, <laughs> a series that I've not read yet. So it's fine. It's okay. I still read it. It's The Witches of Brooklyn and this one is called Some More Magic. <laughs> I do think that it worked as a standalone. Like I wasn't familiar with the characters as you probably would be if you read the first two, but I thought this was cute. It mostly follows the story of this girl named Effie. This one in particular, she's going to camp. She is a witch. And at this camp in particular, she's discovering that she has a green thumb, which means she can kind of like conjure things specific to nature. In this one, she also, you know, deals with like typical young kid stuff, you know, bullying, not feeling like you're fitting in. She's embarrassed because she doesn't know how to swim and has to take lessons, but it's really cute. It was entertaining. I do want to go back and read the first one. I feel like probably this one I would enjoy even more if I had read the first one, but I did really like it. I think based off of just reading this one alone, it was probably a three star for me, but overall it's a cute book. I could see this being like a show some kind of series cartoon like it's really adorable and the characters are memorable. The next one that I read was definitely my favorite out of this whole bunch and that was Sea Sirens A Trot and Captain Bill Adventure by Amy Chu. This ended up being so stinking cute. I was a little nervous at first that I wasn't going to enjoy it that much because of the art style. It's not my favorite art style but honestly I loved this story. I mean there's a cat so I was pretty much sold right away. But this follows the story of Trot, who is a spunky Vietnamese American surfer who like obviously loves to surf and she surfs with her cat, Captain Bill. <laughs> 
And then her and Captain Bill, and then also her grandfather who is struggling with dementia, love to go out to the ocean, to the sea, and one day they all find themselves in a underwater sea adventure with sea sirens and sea serpents, and it's just super cute. There's one part in the book where they give Captain Bill, the cat, the ability to like speak words instead of just talk in cat. And like, I always love that in books because anytime you put words to what cats are saying, they're just so sassy and I love it. I thought this was really creative, really fun, and I loved it. I gave it a five out of five. And then the next book that I read was Alice in Wonderland. Full disclosure, this is the complete Alice in Wonderland, which I knew that, but I didn't like know it, know it. <laughs> and then I started it and I was like, oh, this is gonna take me a long time to get through and then I realized it's because it's the complete works of it's like all of like Alice through the looking glass it's all of Alice in Wonderland stories it is pretty robust like it is very much true to its original writing by Lewis Carroll I love Alice in Wonderland the book by Lewis Carroll I read it in middle school and I've loved it ever since in my brain though the Disney version of Alice in Wonderland is just always what I think of when I think of Alice in Wonderland, like the cartoon. And I always forget how much more weird the actual original Alice in Wonderland is. And I think that this book really captures like kind of like the creepiness and the unsettling feelings a little bit in Alice in Wonderland. It's just a little creepy. I did find this in the kids section of the library. I don't necessarily think that it's for children. I mean, maybe when I was a child, honestly, I probably would have been drawn to it. Let's be real. <laughs> but yeah, this was a fun one to revisit. If you're a fan of Alice in Wonderland, like the original story, and you want a graphic novel companion, I highly recommend this. All right, that is six more books down and I only have four more to go. We're gonna do it guys. We're gonna do it. Hello, I am done with all 24 books. <laughs> I'm so tired. It's like 1220 right now. I feel like with the time that I spent reading, it was still within a 24 hour period. Was it a like consecutive 24 hours? No, but I busted my butt and I have done nothing but read for the last two nights. So real quick, I wanted to tell you about the last four books that I read. The first one was The Girl from the Sea. This was such a cute story. It's about a girl who's in high school. Her and her mom and her brother just moved to this island town. She's got some friends, but she also recently meets this girl who also has some secrets. They kind of fall in love and it's kind of like a like discovering yourself sort of story. The art was really, really beautiful and I really liked the ending. I really liked this story, honestly, overall. Um, I thought it was really sweet for a lot of different reasons. This one was honestly probably a four star for me. I actually liked it more than I thought I would. The other book that I read was When Stars Are Scattered. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I loved this so, so much. I gave it five stars. This tells the story of Omar and Hassan. They are brothers at a refugee camp in Kenya. This was so touching, humbling, poignant. I learned a lot. I cried. It absolutely stirred up a lot of emotions. <laughs> Reading this story, it is a little bit of a longer book. It took me a while to get through, but it was so worth it. I loved it. Love this story. It's also a true story, which was really impactful. And it's part of the reason I got so emotional was getting to the ending. I knew it was based off of a real story going into it, but reading the whole story all the way through, it just was really, really impactful. And I would recommend this honestly to anybody. I thought it was so, so good. So well done. The art was good. Writing was good. Pacing of the story was good. I loved this. The next book I read was The Only Child. This was so good as well. This is actually a wordless picture book. I guess I don't know if it's technically considered a graphic novel. But I found it in the graphic novel section at my library. This is actually another book. It's a fantasy book, but it's kind of based off of a true story from the author, which I really loved. They told the story in an author's note in the beginning of the book that said, the story in this book is a fantasy, but it reflects the very real feelings of isolation and loneliness I experienced growing up in the 1980s under the one-child policy in China. 
And then the author proceeds to share that once when she was six, her parents actually put her on a bus to go to her grandmother's house, but she fell asleep. And when she woke up, the bus was empty. So she got off and she ended up being lost for a few hours. And this follows the story of a young girl who decides to leave her house one day out of feeling very lonely, wanting to go visit her grandmother, and she kind of gets lost, but she finds this beautiful stag that she ends up following. And it's just this really cute story of being lost, but then knowing that you can always find your way back home. I thought it was so sweet. I really liked it. It feels weird giving this one a rating. I suppose if I had to give it one, it would be like a three star. It was good, but it definitely, in comparison to some of the other ones I've read for this readers, Fun. It's just not kind of on the same level, but it was really sweet. And then I saved the best for last because I just knew that at the end of all of this, I would start feeling kind of burnt out reading so many books. I saved volume three of Lore Olympus for the end. <sighs> five out of five stars. <laughs> I love this series so much. It's pretty popular, but if you don't know, it follows the story of Greek gods and goddesses, particularly Hades and Persephone, and it's just the most like adorable cinnamon bun relationship. Like they're so cute. Very slow burn, but I love it so, so much. I loved volume three as much as I have loved one and two. Just my favorite all time. I cannot wait for volume four to come out. This series is just uh, such a winner for me. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So that's it. 24 books in 24 hours, kind of. However you want to interpret it, I'm counting it. I crushed reading 24 graphic novels. I am satisfied. I feel like it was a success. I am sleepy, so I'm going to go to bed. And tomorrow I will check in with sort of like a tier ranking of all of these 24 books that I've read over the last 24 hours. Happy Sunday. Okay, so I'm here to rank all 24 books that I read. I'm so excited to get to this. I love a good tier ranking video. I've never done one myself, so hopefully I can... <laughs> do it well. Okay, so we're just gonna jump on in. I have five categories, which are kind of similar to like the five star ratings. So I have the loved category, I have the great read category, it was fine, meh, and then pass all together. We are gonna go ahead and get right to the first book. That is the Amelia's Are We There Yet? Longest car trip ever, <laughs> her notebook. I already know immediately where this is going. I'm gonna put it right in the past category. I did not like this book. I thought Amelia was just so incessantly mean towards her sister in the notebook. And it was just so prevalent throughout the whole story. Like this is still a book that children are reading and I personally would pass on it. So that's that. Moving on to the next one. Oh, this is The Only Child. So this is that book that had only pictures and no words. It was really, really beautiful. I loved that it was the author's true like story, like inspired by her feeling lonely growing up. It was really good, but I don't feel like it was great. I didn't love it, but it wasn't meh. So I think I'm going to put it right in the middle. I would say if I have to, if I had to give it a star rating right now, it would be a 3.5. So leaning towards better. This next one is the Brooklyn S'more Magic book. This was fine. <laughs> I guess I know exactly where that's going. <laughs> I thought it was cute. I thought it was fine. It's probably a little bit my fault that I didn't read the first two in the series, but it's a very like mid graphic novel. I didn't find it like super original. So yeah, it's definitely gonna go in the middle category. The next book is The Sea Siren. I loved this one so, so much. I know that this is immediately going to the top. Even though the art style was not my favorite, I really liked the story. I like underwater things. So I enjoyed the fact that the main character and her cat were like underwater for a day or two. I just thought it was imaginative and creative. I really liked the cat, Captain Bill. <laughs> and the next one is Old Things. This was so good. Oh my gosh. So I don't know if I want to put this in loved or great read. I think I have to put it in loved. It made me cry. It was really quick. It was really poignant. I really appreciated that the author didn't mince words when it came to the grandmother like Bubby. She was very mean. She was pretty intense, but she has a lot of trauma and a lot of things to 
process and, and I can appreciate just sort of like the realness in this book. I thought it was really beautiful and really well done. I liked it a lot. The next book is Graveyard Shakes. Ooh, okay. This one, this one. This was the book that was darker than I thought it was going to be. And it was the one that I was a little bit confused on like who the demographic was. Was it middle school? Was it high school? Was it younger than middle school? I wasn't quite sure. I liked the theme about being true to yourself, not caring what other people think, which a lot of these books had. I think I have to put it in the meh category, if I'm gonna be honest. Like, it just wasn't, wasn't one of my favorites. It wouldn't be one that I would kind of recommend, but now that I'm kind of thinking about it, I'm like, maybe I should put that this one in here too. Yeah, I'm shifting this. Am I allowed to do that? I'm gonna do it. They're okay, but they're meh. Apple Crush. Okay, I actually liked this one. This definitely was a middle grade. There's no questioning like who the demographic is, what the message of the story is. I really liked the Halloween vibes and the fall vibes in this book. I really did like this one. I like that it had a blended family and it talked about that. It also talked about, you know, not wanting to grow up too fast and how like people around her were kind of pressuring her to be all about romance and love and she's like I don't want that like that's still nothing that I kind of want to get into yet and I kind of I don't know I just liked that. I'm torn between great read and it was fine. I probably wouldn't categorize it as a great read but it was. It was fine. It was good. It was fine. It was better than these two so I feel confident with these two being in this tier and then Apple Crush being there. Alice in Wonderland. Honestly <laughs> I probably didn't talk about this well enough last night when I read it. While I enjoyed it, and I'm already a little bit biased because I like Alice in Wonderland, like I like the story already. Do I love this graphic novel? I would probably just say read the book. While I love the story of Alice in Wonderland, the graphic novel itself was a little meh. Ooh. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that, but I really have to say it just wasn't my favorite and it's not gonna be one that I'll like want to ever pick up again or anything like that. Okay, Crumbs. Crumbs, I just, I've been thinking about this book since I finished it yesterday. It was so long-winded for what it was. And there were honestly some parts where I felt a little lost. I felt a little confused. I really don't fully still understand what her job was. A lot of things just weren't super explained. And while I understand that that happens in a graphic novel, I don't know, if this one's tough. I'm gonna put it in the great read section though. I did really like it and enjoy it. And I did say at the time, you know, I felt like it paid off and I found myself enjoying it more and more as it went on. It would have been one that I loved if things were explained a little bit better. I did really like the art style though. It was great. I feel solid about this choice. It was a great read. Did I love it? No. Garlic and the Vampire. This was so stinking cute. If you're looking for a fast read, this was adorable. I loved the artwork. It didn't make me feel things the way that kind of like these other books made me feel things. So I feel confident that I'm going to throw this one in, in the great read category as well. I'm still going to pick up the second one. I really enjoyed it. I don't have like a lot of bad things to say about it. It was pretty simple, but honestly, it was still really enjoyable and I would recommend it to any reader. Lore Olympus volume three. I mean, immediately. <laughs> immediately going into the loved. We all know how I feel about this series by now, but I love, love Lore Olympus. Honestly, reading the third one just made me want to start over and read them all over again right away. And if a book can do that, I'm sold. I love it. It takes a lot for me too. Like I'm not a huge romance reader. It takes a lot for me to get invested into characters in that way and really like ship a couple super hard. And I do. I love them. I love Hades and Persephone. I just... Mm, so good. The next one, When Stars Are Scattered. Oh my goodness. Loved, loved, loved. I want so many people to read this book. I woke up thinking about this book as well today. It's so impactful. I don't think I'll ever forget this story and I want to buy it so I can own it. This was one that I got from the library and I really want to have it for my own shelf. I loved that one. Arthur and the Golden Rope. <laughs> this is a little harsh for this story, but that wasn't my cup of tea. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the past category. This wasn't for me. I didn't love it. It's super forgettable. I didn't like it. <laughs> Amelia's Notebook, the original version. This one is a little bit more mild and it doesn't feel as repetitive as the first one. And I have a lot of nostalgia from this one. I'm gonna put it in the meh category. I'm putting it above the pass altogether because like I said, it wasn't as harsh towards the sister. It's a little bit more easy to get through. I found that this one wasn't trying as hard. And so I do feel comfortable putting it in a 
tier above the other one. Okay, be prepared. Interesting. I was just about to say it was fine. So I think I know my answer. It was, it was fine. It was just fine. I definitely feel like I'm gonna remember her summer camp, her experience, her journey. I could relate definitely to the character in feeling like alone and lonely and left out, but I felt like it was a little long-winded and I really didn't like the art style too much. So yeah, it was fine. The Runaway Princess. I loved this one so much. Immediately going to the top. Loved it. I had such a fun time reading it. I want to buy this one for my niece, honestly. I think she would probably love it. It was just so cute and whimsical. If you're a fan of kind of like adventure time, like very sort of just imaginative, creative things, I feel like you would like this book. That one out of all of the books that I read really felt like it was sort of like speaking to my inner child. So I loved that one. Feelings. I wanted to like this so much more than I did. It was a good read, but I wasn't, I wasn't as impressed with it as I felt. I loved the art style so, so, so much. And honestly, that's kind of the only thing I loved about it. Ah, this one hurts. This one actually hurts. Maybe the message of the book was lost on me. I don't know. But this one I just didn't gravitate to as much as I really, really thought that I would. I'm glad that I owned this book. I love the art style. And I will never stop saying that, but the book was fine. It was, it was just fine for me. Oh, I don't like that. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I have another Amelia's Notebook. Okay, well, just ignore that. I don't know if I can get rid of it. Frizzy. Oh my gosh. Another one that I loved so much. I honestly feel like that's a book I could read once a year. I loved her story. I loved the conversations and how impactful they felt without feeling forced. Just felt very natural and I loved it. I loved Frizzy. Oh, so, so much. Okay, Alcato and the Turn Up Child. No, pass, by. I <laughs> hated that book. I don't know why. Weird, bad writing. A little, just not, no, it was not good, no. I don't even need to get into it. I just really didn't like that one. <laughs> the Girl from the Sea, oh, this was so cute. I'm gonna put in Great Read. I really liked that one, loved the art style, loved the story, liked the characters. I really liked it, it was a great read. Long Way Down, Jason Reynolds. Man, this was so good too. This one was so heavy. It was definitely the heaviest book I read and I really did like it. It wasn't one that for me personally was on par with the loved tier, but it was a really, really good book. And I loved the concept of the story. I think I'd also love to read the novel. I don't know if it's the exact same as the graphic novel. I'm gonna put this in the great read category. I think everyone should read it and it, it really was a great book. Sunny Rolls the Dice. This one was fun. It was pretty easy peasy about a girl who wants to play D&D, &D, which I kind of did really like that that felt a little bit new and fresh. I'm definitely gonna go ahead and put this in the it was fine category. The Sprite and the Gardener. Oh, that art was so good. I don't know that I can put it in the loved category though. While I did love it, I did love it. It didn't invoke the same feelings that the books up in the loved tier did. So for that reason, I'm gonna put it right here in the great read category. Okay, and the last book is The Okay Witch. Hmm, <laughs> this one honestly, is one of the hardest ones for me to figure out where to put because I like that it was a little bit more robust than you typically find in middle grades. Like compared to Sunny Rolls the Dice or Apple Crush, like this one definitely dove deeper into like some history, generational trauma, stuff like that. It also wasn't a book though that I just felt like really engrossed by the whole time. I think I'm gonna have to put this right there in the middle category and it was fine. I honestly don't know if I'll pick up book two or not. So I feel confident putting that there. All right, so here we go. The final ranking, I actually had a pretty great readathon looking at some of these books. I read a lot of really excellent books and really enjoyed the majority of them. I have six books on here that I absolutely loved and then five more that I really, really thought were wonderful and really great. So, I mean, I feel like this was a pretty successful readathon. I'm so happy to kind of see this in this way because it's fun to get through so many books and see where they kind of all stacked up against each other for me personally. Well, that is the end 
of the readathon. Thank you so much for joining me if you've made it this far. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, if you've liked any of them. Of course, no spoilers as always, but let me know if you've read any of the ones that I loved in the loved category. I'd love to talk about them because I love them. <laughs> Thank you again to the hosts for putting this readathon on. Y'all are so special and great. I had the best time with it and I loved seeing everyone interact all weekend. It has been such a joy to step back into doing a readathon again. It felt really, really good and really fun. So thank you. Well, with that, I hope y'all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day wherever you are. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying healthy, being kind to yourself. Remember that self-care. I love you and I will talk to you soon in my next video, y'all. Bye.